Okay, guys, it's Calvin. Jason's over there from the cartoon company. Chase had a, a big week sorting out this one. This is the Land Cruiser that some guy stole out of a shed. He got it so, so cheap and he wants it sorted properly. And we've been asked, commissioned to sort that bit. And then he's going to take it home and he's going to pull it apart, pull off the body off. So everything we do needs to be really serviceable. Unlike the wiring that came out of it, that, that is how it was, we removed it. Because you couldn't get the plugs through the firewall. It was a bit of a nightmare. Jason's prepped it. So mechanically prepped. But in saying that, of course, there's wires to the starter motor. You now there's a new idle speed control unit on the front. There's fuel pressure sensor fitted. And if you heard that babble in the background, he hasn't sorted the oil pressure. So we've got to work out a way to get oil pressure into the factory crown, oil filter housing unit assembly. There is a new alternator down there. We're waiting on the power stair pump. That's on the list of repairs to do. And then he's going to do a little bit of body, but not too much. It's only really to make it so it fits and makes the stuff we're doing work. It does have a mechanical oil pressure gauge in the vehicle. A little dark in here. Uh, that's an oil pressure. And it's got a water temp over that side. It's very dark. Whole box of coils, which will Jason will have to fight. We have to sand because it's the Gen 1 engine and it's got the small holes. We make a set of relays and fuses, similar to this, but, but a little bit different because this is a uh, an old link that it's getting. Now, this one, what we're, we're trying to do, it, it's got a Link Plus ECU, really early Link Plus, and we're going to wire it in such a way that if it ever gets an upgrade, we can cut the plug the header plug or the ECU plugs off and fit any other ECU we want to fit. So we're trying to make sure it's as modernized as we can whilst retaining that old ECU at this point in time. Because there's nothing wrong with it. It works just fine. And when tuned properly, it'll work perfectly well and run this engine perfectly well. So Jason's going to be working on this one. which just It's quite helpful to have um, the right fuel rails on this one at the moment. And here is our starting loom. We do not start with a fly loom, we're starting with rolls of wire. It's yet another custom loom, Jase. Yeah. Like every other time. Oh, like every other, like the loom I just did on the, on the, on the weekend. No, we don't count Nissans. We don't talk about Nissans. There's six cylinder things. We don't, we don't even know how six cylinders work in a row. I do. Will you stick to the six cylinders, we'll stick to the V8s. Are you wiring that other six cylinder next week? What other six cylinder? That sort of goldy coloured one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Goldy coloured one? Is it gold? What colour is it? Um, what, the car's silver. Silver one? Or yeah, that gray. one. Grey. Grey. It's, it's grey now. The car's grey now. Okay, so are we wiring that one next week? Well, are you wiring that one next week? Oh, uh, you're down here, yeah, yes. I'll let you wire that one next week. Okay. As long as you got this one going. As long as that goes. You can wire that six cylinder thing. Real motor. Right. We'll catch up with Jason later. He's going to do stuff and work out stuff and again, all different but the same. same. Like every single one. Yeah. yeah. Sort of oil pressure too. Mm. Do it early. Earlier rather than later. Mm. Not feeling that much. Don't get to the end of the week and still need to do an oil pressure. Yeah. During the week, last week, of course, we were lots of discussions. So we actually have done some planning, okay? Um, and I do recommend writing your planning down. Because we do these all the time, we just do it in our head. Like, the whole wiring loom is in our heads. And Jace has even learned to do the same thing. Yep. Just don't forget that green wire. Yep, I'm going to put that in this week. Good. <laughs> what are you doing, Jace? The heat shrink, heat shrink roll down here. I was like, where's my heat shrink for this end? This is too long. Yes. 
If I do this, funny enough, my heat. Oh, look, look at that. Back. Oh. <laughs> Tahi coming on with a Land Cruiser one. It actually looks like wiring. Yeah. You're hammering. We probably should sit down and check where number one is because it's a dinosaur link to work out which one in the firing order is number one. This link is so old that we have to wire the cylinders not in cylinder order, but in firing order. Yeah, in firing order. And we have to work out where number where the first cylinder is because it might not actually be number one. It might actually be number eight. So if you get it wrong, you've got 16 pins to pop. 16? Well, you have to move ignition and injection. Let's get it right, because I don't want to do that. Just, yeah. That sounds... Well, we should have taken a note out. It was before, but we've changed Wouldn't it. Wouldn't have matter. We've changed it. And did they have it right? Because if you get the injectors wrong, it'll still run. So Jason's just been in playing with cam positions, trying to determine where the positions are. Did you put your finger up the cam sense, crank sensor holder check there? Isn't a trigger right there as well? Oh, Ideally, it's halfway in between. So hopefully we've got it correct because we can't just change the software because it's an old dinosaur. So there's a little bit of time just checking this and sorting this correctly. And because it doesn't have the Lexus subboard in it. The loom's coming out really nice. Do yourself. So it isn't, it's definitely passed. It's Do not stick coming. Your, stick your stick my in. finger in the hole. Yes. Finger the hole. Yeah, it's passed. It's passed. Yeah, so it's got to be the next one. So they're not ideally positioned. It would be better to have it halfway in between the two. So let's hope we've got that correct. Otherwise, it's 16 pins to change. It'll just backfire. They, they could just, um, they could have just like mixed the... Oh, they lucky dipped those plugs, man. Oh, the wires are all over the place. I'm like, where's one? Um, oh, it's there. Yep. I well, this injector. Well, back, back when they were doing this stuff, these were like common plugs, like for those adapter links, adapters you could get, like the apex -E or pair of C yeah. adapters would have these sort of plugs. So they use those sorts of plugs. Because I think they used that one on the G3. Yeah. Or they'd use it on the G2. They use those style plugs. But those are real common. So that luckily that's a Lexus plug for us. Mm. That's the early Lexus plug. WRXs, Mitzis. That's why I've got a yellow one because Mitzi's were yellow. And then I've got a grey one for the end, so we've got three different colours. Chase has remembered the grommet. And then oh, got the coils in. We've done some firing order. And now he just has to put the wires under there. And do some relays. Or I'll do relays. Um, yeah, well, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 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 uh. Fuck. Right. I ring Noah, see if he knows how to... Yep. I, I did look at your exhaust suggestion from the other day. Yep. It's very sexual, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Fa factory logs that have then been modified further. Yeah. This one's not so bad. I think this one's still normal. It's the other side that has the flange sticking at the side. Well, it's going back on. Yeah. So that's the factory 131 Crown oil filter. It's interesting unit, eh? Hmm. I was actually looking at a post where some a guy put up some photos of the three main oil filter units. Mm -hmm. And of course this one doesn't fit around all headers and not all the blocks are tapped for it. How about we Oh, that is, that is really disgusting, eh? We'll actually use a drain tray for the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> this is slightly of soda moss that this morning. It was, uh... I was like, oh, I should go get the drain tray. Oh, it's too late. It's already hit the floor. Yeah. 
And we'll use that factory stud for another earth, eh? Up to the rusty chassis. At least when um, Reuben puts it all together, he'll know to put a nice earth on it if we've already got it there. Oh, it's even got the, the exhaust has got the dent for the drive shaft too. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the adapter plate that's in this? Oh, uh, it's like a big piece of steel. Yeah, massive bit of steel. Massive, massive piece of steel. It's like 40 and 50 mil thick, isn't it? Oh, probably long, bigger than that. Might be like 25. It's huge. And just a square block with holes machined out of it. Yeah, that's, that's about 20 mil thick, yeah. Yeah. One of the sumps that worked really well on this one, of course, would be that 2UZ sump, which we're going to be using on the 40 series cruiser when we do one, and put this, the 3UZ in it. We've got the proper sump, so it'll sit over here nicely, right out of the way of the drive shaft and everything. Look at that. The sensor yeah. fits. Excellent. It wouldn't fit if there's air con there. This truck's still going to come up good, even though it's kind of a bit yucky looking. It's going to come up really nice. I'm not sure about that fuel pump assembly. Really should go in the tank. And a filter before it, which is probably too coarse. And hopefully fixes that battery tray coming through the floor, because that's kind of silly. Considering you could have actually put it right under the back of the floor, like in the middle here, and it would actually go completely under the floor. Well, they just could have sat on the side of the wheel top. Yeah, sit on the wheel soft top. Black gold. Pretty sure that's just like crude oil that comes out of the ground actually. I think it's sort of turning back. It's, it's, uh, what's the word? Well, it's turned back into, into crude oil again. Hey Ruben, um, we're going to put some Cheapish oil on it. We're not going to put the really good stuff. Please change it after you've run it a little bit. Thanks. It might even be worth taking a sump off it, Ruben. Um, we're going to focus on getting the wiring sorted. We're just a thought. That's your choice. What's Jason doing? Trying to burn his fingers. Trying to burn your fingers? I'm trying not to burn them. Oh. And you're just, you're just going hard and you're going to shrink it without testing. It's all going to be good. That's how I do them. Looks lovely. So this was DR25? This is DR25. It's DR. You can use your eyeballs. I haven't taken the other stuff out of my eat yet. <laughs> You've still got the, the other stuff. Yep. Why are you busy? We've put in an extra map sensor plug if we ever uh, change systems, change ECUs. Look at this. Isn't that looking just stylish, Jace? Stylish? Stylish. Look at that. That is very neat. That's very neat and tidy. Looking good. It did my head in. Yeah, it's all because you're all backwards, eh? Well, well, you're all in the wrong place. It's not even backwards. It's like just we'll just start here and then, yeah, poor old yellow got ripped apart and <laughs> oh, that one. Yep, yep, yep. And then, so, and then putting it and then I'm reading it and I'm sticking the pins in the wrong hole because I'm reading the wrong numbers because I'm reading the wrong yeah. numbers. And, it's like Lucky Dip. Yep. Lucky Dip ECUs. Because this one is so old, it doesn't get wired in cylinder order. I think I've already said this actually, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, so you wire it in, firing order. In, in the firing order. So number, the first one you wire, num cylinder number one, goes to the first position in the firing order after the trigger wheel has gone past the sensor. Which we think is number five. Yeah. And that is... Because the stuff is so old, it's going really back in our memory banks. We've read the instructions. Yes, yes, we're male and we read instructions. The modern ECU, you, you wire number one cylinder to number one injector, number one coil, and then you change the firing order in the software. 
This was before that. So we have to actually physically wire it in the correct order. Some old Motex are the same. In the correct order, the wrong order. In the firing order of the engine. In the way the engine operates. Yeah, but in the wrong order. It's but not as number one. Yes. No. And you start part way through the sequence. No, we start at number five on this one. Yeah, hopefully. Maybe. We're gonna have flames for starting. Yeah. And and we we don't really it doesn't really matter about the injectors, it'll still go. But of course it's the coils that are very important. Very, very important. So Jace is hammering. He's he's got a mission on. He wants to wire his car next week. As well as other things. And other things, so he's absolutely hammering on this job. How to inspire the man so he can fix his own car. Gotta find that stud too. Oh, it's over there, the nut it wound out with a nut. And you got we got sand coils. Yeah, I'll, yeah. All that sort of stuff. You got that new sensor in. Oh, I found a sensor. That past there's bolted on tight. Oh, I've got to get a belt for you too, don't I? The correct belt. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, plugs in. Look at that. Oh, plugs in. Fucking okay, something all right. Plugs in. Everything's kind of plugging in, Jace. Shit. Do you reckon you're going to get a punch up that um, banjo fitting there for the inlet? Put it on an angle upwards? Huh? This one? You reckon you're going to have to be in that? That looks really nice, Jace. You've done a beautiful job again. You get the loom sitting in nicely. Get some stuff plugged in. Get the coil sitting in it. And I think, yeah, we'll chuck some wheels on it, eh? Yeah. And put some tools away and go home. Chuck that old crap in the boot. Oh, we saw that return line. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do that next week. Get all the other stuff looking good. It's looking lovely. You've done a beautiful, beautiful job. Brush brother. Oh, no, that's right. And you probably should take the compression test out of it. Yeah, I'll work. I'm going to put a coil in this. No, that you actually did the compression test and probably put a spark plug back in it. Oh, now the wiring looks good. Yep, it's neat, doesn't it? Couple of zip ties in me, fucking mate. Zip tie that, that's that. Yep. I've got some cable clamps and screws and stuff. Yeah, I reckon there's at least another day on it. It's good. Okay. There's two, there's the... We don't, you still don't know what the wires coming through the firewall are? Those ones? Yep. <laughs> okay. No. And you still haven't cut this off. I still earth. Yeah. Well, you'll just take it off and put the new earth on. Exactly. Wasn't too concerned about it. I don't think you exceeded the quality of this though. I think this is kind of special. So this, this alternator plug, which was round and now it's oval, is part of the main engine loom and my standard relays will just about work a mm, yeah. couple of mods on the standard relays yep. cool and then we just got to find the water temp wire yep and the alternator light wire inside the truck yeah i reckon one of those is going to be water temp because that's the right color yep. yellow green is the right color for water temp wasn't awesome. okay You spend another hour, get that underway and get some coils sitting in it and call it a day. Put some wheels on it. Oh, you got it. It's the magnetic one. I've got the clutch master cylinder in my car and you get the slave tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We probably should put a brake booster line on it too, eh? Oh, I was going to leave it because it was quality. Like, Have we got any air brake line? I, I don't know. I need to put 
plug this in. I want that right. Well done. Check it out. There is a wiring loom in there. So it comes through the grommet. Ooh, I'm trying to slip off. And down. Injectors. The, the uh, water temp sensor gauge wiring is back in. That was from this vehicle anyway. Coils are in. I've got the idle speed to put on. I've just had another shipment of those turn up. And it's all looking really nice. Jason's mounted a, a fuse unit over there. That's to protect the alternator. We'll actually put a fuse in the alternator and you can see the wiring is big. Pretty much what we've got left is to connect the ECU to the relays and then into the vehicle. So there's gonna be a little bit of just a, a quick flick apart in here. Run some wiring up for the fan. Pull some of this stuff inside and do some testing and checking of the vehicle. Work out what this stuff is. Sometimes when a vehicle is such a mess like this, it's actually easier not to try and trace everything of what other people have done. Um, it's easier just to test the vehicle itself. And this one was pretty bad. But as you can see, the wiring loom is looking absolutely gorgeous now. There's a power steer pump back on it that's been rebuilt. And I've actually managed to find a clutch master and clutch slave cylinder. So we'll see if we can actually make those the clutch itself work as well. I'm not holding my breath on that one because it is pretty yucky. We've, we've got a lever bar in, we've got a bit of a lever on the on the a lever on the lever. Yeah. A pry on the lever. So lots of good stuff's happening. Probably another day, we'll have it going. And uh, of course, oh we drained the oil out. Of course we did that stuff. Um, and this the radiator's got to come out, but we just we put a, like a litre of antifreeze in it so we can see if. If there's any leaks on the engine wise it'll be green it's just not not just water but not too much the owner Ruben's taking care of all the cooling system from there the radiator and then he's gonna continue on the truck hopefully we'll see it back in many moons when it's all going I'm really looking forward to seeing this going but I'm really looking forward to seeing this back on the road but right now I'm looking forward to having it running and seeing if we've got those wires into that old link correct and we can get the settings right. I am crossing my fingers a little bit.